I've been using this keyboard now for over a year and I could not work anymore without it. If this keyboard didn't exist, I would, I guess, get my unemployment checks by tomorrow. So what do I like about this keyboard? I live in Germany and it's actually quite difficult to get unorthodox keyboards like this one. And one thing you will notice is that it's split, but also that the keys are in columns. So there's no offset with the keys. And this is maybe really useful. I don't know, because I have not really tried the split layout with the offset. But it's actually quite nice and it's really good for my hands also. I've used the keyboard of the Mac that you can see here in the background before. And I must say in the first six months, it was really great to use. It felt amazing. But after some time, dust got stuck there. And also, I think my hands developed arthritis or something. They became really red around these body parts and these body parts on both hands. And it actually hurt a bit to type full force with this Mac keyboard. I'm a quick typer. I can type fairly quick. And so going all out on that keyboard, it was bad for my hands. So the Mac keyboard being unhealthy for my hands is what prompted me to ask my past employer to get this keyboard for me. And it was really good. It took me some days to learn. Actually, I could type with it right away, but I didn't properly use it. So my fingers, my fingers, they would uh, like go like this. So my brain kind of knew the layout, but I would still not properly type and then it took me actually i forced myself over a couple of days to really not move the fingers and just use the columns like so and this is actually really good it's really good that you can you only need to go up and down with your hands you don't need to go sideways and that is so easy once you learn how to do this this is so nice for your hands i think it took me around Two weeks to get comfortable and another maybe two months to get better and better with this keyboard. I even think I never really learned how to be as quick and good with this keyboard as I am with the traditional keyboard layout. But this trade-off comes with a massive comfort and yeah just comfort and ergonomics that are unbeatable and a much greater sense of control because everything is much more deliberate that you do. Other benefits are that you can remap keys and macros quite easily. It's very unintuitive how you do it, but once you get a hang of it, it's really easy. There is a way to do it with manually on the computer, but that's even more cumbersome. And there's this program I found that you can find online, which gives you a graphical user interface, and it's actually quite good. There I also discovered that you can remap the key. There's like a keypad button and it enables the keypad, key, keypad layer, but you can then remap this layer to anything else. Because who really needs a keypad? Like, Jesus Christ, why do we even still have keypads? I don't, keypads, I don't know. But So this keyboard also has that, but then you can remap it to something else. And this keypad button, it's really unergonomical. It's like really, the position is really bad. It's um, right here, this button. And I wanted to remap it, it was not so easy, then I found out how to do it. And with this program, you can also map it. I mapped it to this button right here. And so that's actually this one here. So it's really central. And that way you can save all your macros and yeah, remaps and, and all this stuff. It's convenient. So this brings me though to a frustration of mine. I live in Germany and Europe and I don't know if it's a Europe or Germany thing but it's quite difficult to get these kinds of keyboards here and they're massively uncommon. I wish that it was more that humanity had found a way to optimize the keyboard but as you like as other videos in this category are already talking about is that we got stuck on the typewriter level and it's uneconomical to change this way and to retrain everybody but it's really frustrating when you work a lot on a computer you want to have like a the most optimal way of using this of using a keyboard i'm also using this keyboard with vim and 
I think that's, I don't know, that's just such a big help. Uh, I'm not sure why you would use it without, I mean, I guess you can use it without Vim, but then with Vim, it just brings everything to another level. I wish I could try out other keyboards to see how I would do with them, like the Ergo Dogs and the Moonlander and, you know, all these other keyboards that are out there. But I'm not yet willing to learn soldering and to learn how to create my own keyboard from scratch. So, and I don't have like a 3D printer. I don't know. I haven't really figured that out. And I have a feeling that in the community of mechanical keyboards or ergonomic keyboards, there is this expectation that you have this as your big hobby. But this is like, I want, if, if I want to, I don't really agree that you have to, I mean, there's some sentiment that creating your own tools is a great thing, but I maybe just want to program and I don't want to learn how to do a keyboard, how to build a keyboard from scratch to optimally program. And so I think it's frustrating that there's this gap in the market, especially here in Germany, where it's so hard to get optimal keyboards for programmers. That being said, I just discovered that there's this company called Keytron and they are really big. They're a really successful company. I think they're both in America and in Europe and they just released a keyboard with the LS layout. So that's the, this Microsoft economic layout. And I probably will buy that when my new job starts and I'm excited to try that out. One reason I'm mentioning this is that a problem with the Advantage 2 is that it's quite lacking in its features. So it has it's very future rich, but then there's only like one layer and it's only because it's the keypad layer and it's like really annoying to re have it on an ergonomic way to access this because this button is really annoying to reach. So you have to like find out how to properly remap it, have like a convenient key there that goes there. Other keyboards, they have like three, four, five, I don't know how many layers, but they have a ton of layers and you can also, in the Ergodox, I think you can make it so that if you press some modifier key, it will go to layer B, but if you keep pressing the modifier key, it will go to layer C. So you can go advanced with these combinations and you can really optimize your workflow. And this is not possible, obviously, with the Advantage 2. Otherwise, I would be raving about this. It would be such an amazing keyboard if all these features were available. I heard that the Keychron keyboards, they do have this ability that you have multiple layers and all this stuff because they use some software. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to trying that out. So overall, I really like the Advantage 2. I really like the split keyboard. I really like all these features, the thumb clusters and the column layout. And I'm frustrated that there's not a bigger offer of these kind of keyboards and that not more people are trying it. It's quite easy to learn it and it's, there's a payoff to learning it that is well worth it. So I hope you found this really interesting. Let me know. Have a really nice day. Bye.